Uh, welcome back to a, another TV movie show review thing. Uh, this time we're going to be reviewing Loki, episode one. It's called Glorious Purpose. It's on Disney+. Plus. It's the third uh, series that Disney Plus has released in their phase four. Uh, joining me is Aiden. Hey, guys. Uh, yeah, so we're going to kind of, I guess we'll start from the beginning of it. Um, so there's a little thing about this show, or this TV show that actually we were talking about a second ago is there's only actually six episodes in the in the show. They've already released three of them, I think. Yeah. So they're halfway through. Um, by the when we're recording this, that is. Uh, so yeah, it's it's kind of crazy because also uh, we were also chatting about how Falcon or the one before this one also had six episodes. I think Wandavision had nine episodes. So they're going like shorter and shorter. Um, it seems like versus like traditional like. I mean, Game of Thrones had 10 episodes, so it's like, that was kind of, even that was a bit short, but it, you're able to tell, like, a full story in that timeline. I think they've taken kind of that lesson and uh, applied it to here and just done bigger budgets. Like, we were chatting about, like, movie-sized budgets. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I believe this particular show is doing at least $10 million, uh, an episode uh, for Loki, which is an, an yeah, insane budget to do. huge number. Yeah, for a TV show. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, but actually getting into the the first episode here, I thought it was a great premiere um, for the show. It definitely piqued my interest. I think as these uh, Disney Plus shows have kept going, I've liked each each uh, new series better than the last. And obviously this is only the first episode uh, that I've watched at least. Uh, but it is, I, I like it. It got me a bit more intrigued in the past uh, pilot episodes that they've done. Uh, with WandaVision, it was kind of more surrealist, so it kind of, kind of got me in that mindset and then captain falcon cap yeah captain falcon and the well falcon and the winter yeah soldier. thank you not captain falcon <laughs> yeah 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 he do, he does become captain falcon. that's true that's true or captain america and yeah yeah but that uh that one was also more traditional marvel more action-packed at least that first episode and them getting like buddy cop mentality kind of uh but yeah this reviews on on loki i just kind of wanted to recap those real quick uh but yeah um it was pretty cool because you got to see the ending of the of, or not the ending, but you got to see where he ends off in Endgame, uh, with him traveling with that sp- space stone, I believe, the blue like tesseract, uh, yeah. going back in time. That was the space stone. Well, so this is the thing with so, the main I guess. Well, spo- protagonist. spoiler alert. Yeah, about yeah, yeah. Loki. Yeah, <laughs> yeah thank you. Aiden. We'll be we'll be going over first episode. So. Yeah, so make sure you watch that on Disney Plus again before you uh <laughs> before you probably listen to the rest of this here because now we're gonna get into actual spoilers. Uh, <laughs> right, right. So, with uh, with the beginning, I was actually kind of so obviously I I watched the trailer. This is actually one of the few shows of theirs that I watched the trailer for because now I have a new like mantra to never watch trailers of anything i actually want to see because <laughs> it kind of just ruins everything uh i don't think the trailer ruined much in this one actually a lot of the trailers seem to come from the first episode for parts of it yeah the the cool thing about the marvel trailers is they spoil well at least for the tv show series that is mm-hmm. they spoil very little of what happens later on in the yeah. show they they lead you in with this trailer they guide you into that first episode with like a sneak peek. That's kind of like what I see the trailers as is here. Yeah. Here's what you'll be getting from the first episode. But then as the series progresses and they do this with a lot of Disney plus shows. So I'm, I'm a huge fan of like most of the modern shows on Disney plus anything star Wars or Marvel related. I'll totally nerd out on. And with Mandalorian, they did this with, uh clone wars the bad batch they're doing it with this show they just did it they're releasing mid-season trailers as well so they they don't just release a trailer at the beginning they also release a mid-season trailer and then sometimes even a end of the season like finale trailer Mm. to to get you really hyped for what they're going to release that's quite interesting because uh, obviously like we were just talking about it's shorter seasons because uh, with this one versus like uh, I actually don't know how many episodes are in Bad Batch, but I know like with Clone Wars, each season's quite well, a bit. Yeah, each season's quite a bit. I believe we're on episode nine or around, okay. around nine now. Yeah. Um, and they just hit the mid-season marker. Okay, so that, that kind of goes to the point where it's like, with that one, you kind of, 
I suppose, have a bit more uh, time to kind of be like, okay, nine episodes have passed, let's release that that trailer, and then we'll go with this, and then to get people hyped for the finale, so viewership's up and everything. Because obviously, I don't think we, I don't think that Disney posts their viewership numbers for uh, for specific uh, shows, but obviously they have analytics on that, and they can tell what's working and not because they're Disney, <laughs> so they're a massive Disney, company, they have, and they know what yeah, they're doing, they have but. Plenty of money. Uh, at least with Loki, um, that'll be interesting to see because, well, actually, the Midway has hit now where the third episode was released on Wednesday. Yeah, so... And so the fourth one's coming. Third one aired on Wednesday. Uh, the fourth one is what they're calling the mid-season because yeah. they released a trailer for it okay. um, yesterday, I believe. Okay. Um, or a couple of days ago. I, I forget when they released it. But I remember seeing it. And then the fourth episode will be that mid-season so next wednesday is the fourth episode and then there will be two more after that okay at yeah. least how it how it seems from them saying that they are going to release six episodes yeah and then uh just to the beginning of it it was kind of interesting to me with so there's the tva which is the time variant agency which essentially the idea of this agency is that long ago in a galaxy far far away they had these different timelines that were warring with each other to become the prime timeline essentially uh and what it sounded like is what they're pulling from spoilers from marvel or from wandavision uh with the nexus um because the nexus is i believe this idea of a specific entity almost uh or event that can uh bring dimensions together and that includes like these timelines and so it right. sounds like that had happened previously in the marvel history lore uh where this nexus event happened all these timelines came together they were warring to become the ultimate timeline and then these lizard bean things uh decided like you know what no uh we're going to control all the time and everything and so they created a what do they call it? Like the, the Universal, pure timeline? Yeah. The, the sacred timeline. Sacred timeline. That's it. And uh, yeah. And so that's essentially, they made that and then they made the TVA, the Time Variant Agency to or safeguard authority, that. authority actually. Authority. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Yeah. I don't want to be, don't want to be wrong on that considering that's the main agency or authority <laughs> in the, in the universe where, and it, it, it obviously seems like, and this is kind of skipping a little bit and we'll, we'll go back to the beginning in a second, but like halfway through or so of the of the show when it hits kind of the cl or the episode when it hits kind of the climax of the episode um loki realizes that the tva basically collects infinity stones like from throughout the timelines and they just see them as yeah. they're not really like they're just like oh yeah these are paperweights essentially is what they call them like what these are nothing I, what i found interesting is uh, and yeah we're kind of cutting into the middle of the episode yeah. but i think that's okay cuz that that was that was a real kick in the neck for yeah. loki like, it, it, it wasn't the fact that he watched his mom die. Mm -hmm. Mobius showed him that on, on like, in 2D, like, holographic, whatever that, yeah. whatever that presentation was. Uh, the, the little reel that he had set up of Loki's entire life. Um, which I think is definitely enough to give me an existential crisis, but wasn't enough to hit loki because <laughs> well he was like oh this loki is all this has is. this glorious purpose like that yeah. that's the name of the episode which i think is genius like the, the episode opens with him basically vanishing mm -hmm. and then doing something he's not supposed to do tva comes in tells yeah. him to stop <laughs> but that entire time he he keeps on assuming and rolling with the idea that his existence will result in some glorious mm -hmm. outcome and that's that's one thing he even touches on when mobius is interrogating him or talking you know chatting with him is like i was born to rule i am the one like you can still because the thing with this loki is that he's not the loki of what we know from endgame where he literally basically sacrifices himself trying to save the universe yeah where he had another like five movies of character exactly to go through. this is this is uh, this is the Loki of old, where he's he's still resentful and bitter about his brother and his father treating him like. And he doesn't know he's adopted yet. He doesn't. No, he, he does. Doesn't... I think because that happens in Thor. He finds out. 
In the first Thor? In the first Thor. Oh, yeah. that's he right. He finds out that's, that's, that's right. what ticks him off almost, where he's like, oh, shit. Um, but yeah, yeah. So he knows that, but he, he hasn't forgiven his father for that yet, basically. And then that's what I... It's interesting because I think what they tried to do almost, and obviously I'll see, I know you've watched a couple more episodes than I have, but it almost seems like with that movie reel that they had set up, they're trying to give the the five epi- or the five movies because obviously we've seen Loki five movies later and seen that development and he's become a fan favorite for a lot of people now and he's honestly one of their best like anti hero villain characters that I think they have in Marvel, um, but he hasn't had that development himself yet, uh, so I I kind of think that the film the real was a way of them giving him. That development, like, you've literally watched your life <laughs> and, like, seen what it's led up to. You've seen your father giving you credit and you've seen yourself forgiving your brother and father and growing to love them and be part of a family and Asgard and more. And, like, saving Asgard, essentially, when uh, yeah. Helena is not his sister, but his, like, the, the goddess of death or whatever yeah. comes and kills it. So, yeah. But that's what I think the, the real was a way of doing. Um, and obviously you're not going to give spoilers on the next couple episodes. But it'll be interesting to see uh, what kind of character arc he has in this. Yeah. Um, because I kind of wonder where they can take him. Because that was the thing with Loki in Endgame was that his character arc was done, basically. Like, he had he had fulfilled his glorious purpose throughout the timeline. It's just not what he thought it would be. Which is, he wanted to rule everything and instead he came full circle from a like from being a villain Mm -hmm. to being a hero at the end even for one brief moment before well it wasn't just right before he died that he was a hero he he, yeah he he did uh, at the end of thor ragnarok he did play a very critical role in saving Asgardians yeah, he from, uh, like, along with uh, Thor and Valkyrie and Hulk. That was almost the, like, somewhat of the uh, the resolution of his character arc when you have the hero's journey. Like, that's kind of his resolution when he actually makes the decisions, like, you know what, I'm going to fight for something bigger than myself and, like, what I want. He's, he's well, fighting for all yeah. of Asgard. Yeah. At least that's how I saw it yeah. in that moment. And I, I think going back to the film reel, it's a, yeah. it's an interesting concept, not only within the show, but just trying to put myself in his shoes. Yeah. Like, what would it be like if you were taken by people you had no idea existed? They say they're the greatest power in the universe mm-hmm. or whatever their claim to fame is. Yeah. They put you in a room and they show you your entire life, how it would have played out. <laughs> They show you years and years of your own character development that mm-hmm. you experience throughout your life. Because everybody's life is one big or multiple small, however you want to see it, hero's journeys yeah. in a way. So what would it be like to experience all of those and then see the outcome? I it, it, it's, a, it's a very... <laughs> yeah that's fascinating that's like idea. when when people ask you the question of like would you like to know how you die or when you die you know like shit like right. that where it's like kind of kind of takes and not to get too philosophical on the, on on this because this is a, a tv show review yeah but, uh, <laughs> sorry but, sorry I like uh, to it kind of takes the, the uh <laughs> almost the enjoyment of life out of it in a way where now he he's and that's what you see loki kind of struggling with when uh owen wilson who's mobius uh, kind of comes back in and like with his little evaporator stick thing, and he uh, he essentially is like, look, he's just on the ground, almost defeated, because he's seen himself die, and he's like, I can't go back to that timeline, because he doesn't want to die. He thinks of himself as a god, and that's like he's like, I can't die, and then he sees himself die. He sees like the one thing in his mind, kind of like evaporate of this purpose, and he's like damn, I was never actually going to rule anything. If this is what they're saying I have to do, and they're the most powerful thing in the universe, he, he probably thinks at this point. Right, um, exactly. So, yeah, I definitely agree with you that it 100% has created an existential crisis for him. And I I kind of feel like this uh, this crisis, now that now that we've talked about this a bit more, might actually be the arc in the show, now that, now we're, that we're thinking about it a bit more and talking about it. Because that is, like, a very, uh, as you say, like, impactful moment, like, 
for him. But um, uh, going to something a little more lighthearted, the kind of the beginning, uh, <laughs> the beginning when he's like brought in and they arrest him, and then he goes through those different like floors of like sign everything you've ever said, <laughs> and, oh, those, and like those scenes going through. Were, I, 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 I was laughed. I know the whole man, that time, dude. that was great because it's just like uh, and the little comedy because I mean I'm I'm glad that they brought. Loki back not even just for the character himself but for Tom Hiddleston like that actor is actually a great actor Tom Hiddleston's great yeah he, it's, it's he insane he nails it with Loki I think my favorite feature about him is his little wicked grin that mm-hmm. he puts on yeah it, it's perfect and it's iconic. A, a lot of the yeah it's iconic a lot of the events in this show and in the movies before have him kind of standing there and he looks unsure for a second <laughs> and then he always puts on this one very dubious smile yeah. and, and it and it fits the character perfectly. Yeah, they one thing with Marvel, uh, not just one thing, but they are amazing at casting choices. You oh, see with Robert yeah. Downey Jr. and Iron Man like that is Iron Man. Robert Downey Jr. is Iron Man. You see it with Tom Hiddleston and Loki. Like I'm sure Tom Hiddleston's a nice guy in like interviews and everything, uh, but you he plays just so much range on that character uh going from like a little comical when he's like uh saying like this is absurd and the paper prints out and he's like what is going on and then when they're like if you're a robot it will melt you from the inside the little like metal detector thing and he's like hesitating he's like uh that was uh." another existential crisis yeah he's like wait a second am i a am i a robot (laughs) like what's happening i i I feel like I would have acted the exact same way if I was yeah. in that situation. If somebody was like, here, walk through this detector, it will instantly kill you if you are a robot. Yeah, because it's kind of funny because he's like, no, I'm not a robot. And then he pauses and he's like, what would happen if I was a robot? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. So, I, 100%. I, this this whole episode almost seemed like one um, big existential crisis in a way. Yeah. Now that I'm thinking more about it where it's like, the beginning, even in the comical parts, and then you get the more emotional parts where he's watching his whole life. He sees himself die. He sees his mom die. He sees his father die or something, like, turn into stars. Vanish. Yeah. U- Uguay. Uguay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then it's just, like, he basically sees everyone that he loves, except for his brother, obviously, like, die. <laughs> and there's and the, what's worse is that his death really... Obviously, he doesn't see what happens with Thanos, but in a way, his death is uh, for nothing, in a sense. Because, like, he tries to stop him. He doesn't. He gets the stone, and then later in the movie, kills half of the universe. Yeah, that was always a bummer for me. Yeah, because I'm I, like, I, this amazing character just that, gone. Yeah, that part of Infinity War. Same with Heimdall. War. Same with Heimdall. Yeah, yeah. Heimdall. I, I feel like the Asgardians really got dicked over yeah, throughout, man. throughout the last couple movies. Yeah. Like, most of them died yep. when Asgard fell. And then Heimdall and Loki, mm-hmm. two of the coolest Asgardian characters, yeah. you don't even get to see them fight, fight. Yeah. for oh, man. reality at the end of Endgame. Like, you don't get to see them in that awesome war scene Yeah, when th- they would have both... Well, because they're both, it, Spiced those it up, versions of them, I, at least, are both fully dead. And it's because Ildris Elba is going to be the next James Bond, so he had to go. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, so. Uh, and then, for a second, I thought, uh, obviously, sorry. <laughs> it's okay. For, for a second, I thought, um, so there's a little girl with the blue, like, gum when they went into that mm. church, I think, when they were, like, checking out what was happening. And... So I've I said before I watched the trailers. So if you're at this point, obviously spoilers. But I thought that that was gonna be the the girl Loki for a second, where she was maybe playing them in a way. Because I know I think in the trailers there's like a female version of Loki who's like like a younger female version of her him. And so for a second I thought that was her, but then I, I wasn't exactly sure what that was about. But main point I'm trying to make is that when she pointed to the devil as the one who did it, I thought that was a Mephisto. I thought that she was trying to point to Mephisto. Um, because obviously in WandaVision, that was a, a big theory with like, uh, Agatha, like, and the rabbit was called Scratch, which is another name for the devil and all of this, like weird, like (laughs) not conspiracy, but like theory type stuff. Uh, and obviously Mephisto in the comics at least plays a, a pretty big role and essentially the devil. And so that's what I thought she was pointing to. But then obviously at the end of the show, when Loki asks Owen Wilson, like, how can he help them? 
Um, he says because we're trying to track you. Uh, so I'm not exactly right. sure where that's going, obviously. Uh, you have a bit uh, more of an idea just in, in general, but you're not going to talk about <laughs> yeah, it, obviously, because we'll talk, talk about that about later. I won't talk about any of the other episodes. But, it, it, yeah. it, does get, it does get good. Yeah. Uh, but that that's one thing I, I kind of had a theory on, is that it is uh, it might be Mephisto is what they're introducing in this one, uh, which might have been shattered <laughs> at, at the end of it, but we will see. We will see. Yeah, I've noticed that with... Um... Uh, th- Marvel has kind of thrown us a carrot a few times mm-hmm. that turned out to be fake. With um, <laughs> first with the multiverse, yeah, in yeah. Uh, Spider-Man. Spider-Man: Far From yeah. Home, which is actually apparently that's the last. And uh, not to cut you off, but that's apparently the last movie of Phase Three. I didn't realize that, but that doesn't yeah, start Phase Four. It actually ends Phase Three. Which yeah. I was like, that's kind of wild. Yeah, like, that's interesting yeah. for me. Um, I know we're not talking about Spider-Man: Far From yeah, Home, yeah. but I've got to say. I absolutely love, love, love the villain in Spider-Man: yeah. Far From Home. Yeah. I, what Jake Gyllenhaal is? Yeah, Jake plays? Gyllenhaal. Yeah. He's playing. Um, I cannot believe I'm forgetting the name of the, the villain snowball right now. glasshead thing. Snowball glasshead guy. Yeah. Um, he has not puppet aw- master, He has an awesome that? villain name. Illusion or something. I don't know. But, yeah, no, I, I agree with you. And, I mean, we can obviously do a review of uh, all the Spider-Man movies, I guess. But uh, Far From Home. Because I I, that series, at least, I think is a good one. But with Loki in particular, I'm uh, very interested Mysterio. to see where it goes. Oh, okay. Mysterio. I had to look it up. Yeah. Because I wouldn't be able to sleep at night if I, if I hadn't <laughs> If you got that up. wrong, yeah. But, yeah, that's... Um, yeah, I can't wait to see where this this show goes. I'm, it was actually kind of funny because I I watched the first episode with like a little group of people, and I'm like, I can't watch anymore because I want to talk about this before I watch the the, the next uh, the next episode. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the it, it's been good so far. I'm excited to see where it goes. Uh, I don't know if you have any last comments on on this one because I think we've covered quite a bit of it. I'd say. Yeah, we we covered quite a bit of the episode. I know we were kind of patchy, like here and there, just like yeah, jumping yeah. around different parts. Of the Which is, I mean, that's fine because, all in all, what is time? What is uh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what what is time? Apparently, one laid out timeline where the yeah. TV oh can actually just that walk that is and mess you up if you deviate from exactly. It. That's actually one thing I I did want to actually touch on real quick. I'm a bit confused because I thought the Tesseract was the Space Stone. Or is it the Mind Stone? What is the Tesseract? I th- the, So the Tesseract's the Space Stone. It is the Space Stone. The Mind so, Stone's the one that Loki had in his scepter. And that's, okay. not, that's not the one that they took at the end of... Uh, Avengers. End, or in, at, in Endgame. Yeah, okay. So that's that's one thing I was I was kind of curious about because I'm, I'm somewhat confused on why the TVA even got involved because it's not... There is a Time Stone. Doctor Strange has, or this Sorcerer Supreme has the Time Stone, and they're guarding that. So, I'm I'm a bit like kind of is it because he maybe went to a different dimension with the Space Stone that they got involved? Because it seems like their thing's more time, not no. Space. So they they touch on that while he's watching the reel of his mm. life. Is they they were like everything that the Avengers do is supposed to happen. Like, all of the stuff that they go oh, through okay. is supposed to happen. So he all of deviates the, and, and from he, that. He mentions, like, wait, what the hell? They're the ones committing time crimes. They're the ones mm. going back in time and messing everything up. Yeah, because I agreed with him on that. On their case? Yeah. And, and, I, and I was sitting there like, yeah, why isn't the mm-hmm. TVA, why haven't they... Done anything. Im- imposed <laughs> yeah. on any of the issues that have come up with Endgame, with the Time Stone, yeah. all that stuff. Um, and I think that's one of the, I, I don't know. I, I think that in the end, I, I really love the show, but I think that the TVA is a tough pill to swallow for me. Yes. Because of how much flipping power it <laughs> apparently has. Yeah. If there's one timeline that is absolutely set to happen, it kind of... I, I, I don't know how to put it. It, it, it kind it, of screws with like the perception of almost choice because it it's because that means that like yeah. all of these like take Black Widow for example because that movie's coming out 
soon, actually, like a couple of weeks here, I think. Yeah. But um, that means that she was always destined to kill, not kill herself, but she was always destined to jump off the cliff and do that. It's like everyone that has died, there's been no choice in them dying. Like with even with Tony Stark, it almost takes it away a bit of his choice to sacrifice himself. His his like, OK, I can choose to stay here and like take care of my family or like obviously he they all might have been destroyed because thanos was there trying to wipe everyone out but it kind of takes away that a little bit of that sacrifice of his and just all of the other characters that have died um in this show so far because it's like you were always going to die if you didn't die we would have killed you anyway so that's Right. Kind of what it takes away. At least this like a pruning, little bit for me. Pruning the timeline in case everything goes wrong yeah. and stuff. It, it it takes away that that's the tough pill to swallow is every choice then does not seem like a choice. Yes. It does not seem like there is any free will as soon as you create something like the T V A. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. And that that's what kind of I have difficulty with yeah. because and you, I kinda, you go back mm-hmm. into any of the any of the past Marvel movies, any of the past TV shows. Like you were saying, uh, Black Widow has to jump off and die in order for them to get that stone. Yeah. Or even an even smaller detail. I don't know why this particular scene came to mind, but you mentioned Iron Man. Just like the scene where he's at a party in Iron Man Two, like in his house, he's dancing around in mm-hmm. his Iron yeah. Man suit. Yeah. Like he he pisses his suit just to show yeah. off that his his tech is awesome and stuff like that. He's totally drunk. Like even as small a detail as him pissing his suit. Like if he hadn't done that, the TVA would like we don't know. Oh, that's maybe a good point, maybe actually. there maybe there are an infinite number of mess ups yeah. that are happening because when you get into all this timey wimey bullshit, yeah. Um, you're going back in time. You're going forward in time. <laughs> you're, <laughs> it, it gets really messy really quick. And that's kind of one thing I, oh, I'm... Again, I'm curious. With. So there's obviously the Schrodinger's cat theory where it's like infinite dimensions, infinite like... kind of like, Or it's more of a multidimensional theory, not really infinite dimensions. But there's infinite possibilities essentially of like what could happen. Um, and so because... And I did like the little like history of marvel recap that they did in the little showroom where it was kind of that but if that is accurate which maybe it's not accurate and they're just going to plane everyone for fools but if it is accurate then that means that to to what you were saying that that kind of one timeline uh i i would think that there would be millions of variants essentially uh because something or the real question is, how are there any variants? <laughs> because if there is just this one timeline, then there shouldn't be variants. Because that means everything that's meant to happen is supposed to happen. And surely millions of people aren't getting their hands on Infinity Stones and actually transporting to different dimensions. Because like yeah. we even see at the very beginning of the episode that other dude being brought in uh, as a variant. Mm-hmm. It's like, surely that guy didn't get... What did he do? Stone. Knock over a stapler? He wasn't supposed yeah, to knock exactly, over right? And then he's something. brought in here and like to a farce court and getting killed. <laughs> yeah, like, like why is the line what? of the TVA so small? Like why is yeah. the line pretty much non-existent? Why isn't the line ridiculously long because of the number of variants that there has to be? Or yeah. why are why is anybody there in the first place? Yeah, I, it's, I totally it's really agree. a a one or the other scenario in my mind, at least, especially with you kind of bringing that up. That is a great point. Um, but yeah, it, it'll be really interesting to see they where the show it, goes. They get into it a, a little, little, a little bit more in the future episodes, but th- these, these questions still came to mind mm-hmm. for me, um, despite that. And I'd say, while that does kind of seem like a spoiler at the same time with the first episode, these big questions came into play thinking, straight yeah, off the yeah. bat. They, they make you think about them straight off the bat. And some of it, maybe I maybe the questions that we're asking right now get answered more in the future episodes. They might, yeah, because only half of it's out yet. So maybe even in the finale, it's like with WandaVision and all this, they answer a lot of questions in that finale in the like second to last episode. So I'm sure similar similar with this. Uh, and this honestly seems like a much more smooth show in my mind than like uh, Captain America and Winter Soldier was or even WandaVision. So I'm sure that they will answer that. Uh, in there i'm really interested to see where it goes uh 
but yeah, this has been this has been a good review of it. I think I think uh, we're all gonna wrap up. Uh, thanks for joining me, Aiden. This has been this has been good. We got a resident Marvel expert on the, on the case now. <laughs> resident Marvel nerd geek, <laughs> whatever you want to call me. Expert sounds a lot cooler. So I, I <laughs> we'll go with expert. That. Expert yeah. nerd. We'll do that. <laughs> expert nerd. All right. But uh, we'll see you guys another time. Have a good one.